afternoon. And we've got Katie Robertson, who's going to be your presenter on this afternoon's webinar. She is a subject matter expert in the TIMS platform, the software that's available, the Transportation Information Mapping System. So a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, first off, we're going to accept questions through the question box. And a few of you must have already been on webinars with me before because I see people already putting hi or hello in there. Um, I would ask you please find that question box and just drop me a hi or hello so I know you know where it's at. That's where we'd like for you to put questions in. Um, if you have questions during the presentation and I'll read those off to Katie so she can get them answered for you. Um, the other thing that I normally talk about is handouts and I haven't actually uploaded anything in there yet, but here in just a couple minutes, I'm gonna have some handouts for upcoming webinars, including one on the OH1, which is the Ohio Crash Report. So if you're interested specifically in um, more crash-related data, the OH1 webinar will be of interest to you. Another one that we just announced minutes ago is a, a collaboration between a number of Central Ohio um, municipalities, Upper Arlington, Grove City, where their um, public works folks are going to present on a webinar next week concerning um, COVID-19 and how their operations have changed. And they're also going to talk about how they're attempting and also dealing with public, attempting to and dealing with public involvement. So I'll make sure that those two flyers are in the handout box for you here in a second. That's all I have, Kitty. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do Great this. <laughs> so welcome everyone to Webinar Wednesday. And uh, we're going to be talking about, of course, very large mo motorcycle goes by right as we get started. Uh, we're going to be talking about ODOT's uh, web mapping portal where you can access all of our transportation related spatial data. Um, and you should be viewing the TIMS homepage now. I'm going to do a couple of uh, a quick overview of the TIMS homepage and then um, I'm going to switch over to the mobile view. So if you guys have your phones handy, you can pull up TIMS um, and follow along on your phone. It has a lot of the same functionality, uh, but it's pared down for mobile use. So I think it'll be a good place to start today. Um, okay, so ways to get to TIMS. Uh, of course, there, if you know the URL and have a bookmark, gis.dot.state.oh.us slash TIMS. You, if you know ODOT's um, homepage, there you can just search the new transportation.ohio.gov. You can just search TIMS and the link will come up. Or you can search in Google or um, any other browser, just search ODOT TIMS and it should be the first result. So that'll get you here and you'll see the homepage. And um, you can see that the site is divided into separate pages with a link to each of the pages. And if you attended this morning's webinar for, for GCAT, the link to that um, GCAT analysis or crash data search tool is here as well. On the bottom, there are some links that are worth pointing out. The news link, will include information for upcoming trainings. Of course, a lot of those were um, pared down due to the current situation, but we do still have one scheduled for June, um, and there's a link to register for or get information about these webinars. In the, let's click on the contact link. Um, I'll probably try to finish with this as well, because I want everyone to know how to reach us if you need support or have questions. Um, just email tims at dot.ohio.gov. And the help link will open a PDF user guide. That can be a resource um, if you wanted to uh, search this, this document or, or flip through it. Uh, if you see any of the tools that we go over here today and you wanted to um, get a refresher, this might be a good resource. Okay, and you can go back to the home screen with the home button at the bottom or the TIMS icon uh, at the top left of the title bar. So I've got um, another tab. I'm gonna switch over that I'm mimicking the mobile view here. 
So if you pull it up on your phone, again, um, in your phone's browser, you can just search o.tims or uh, type in the URL and then bookmark that. So you can see it's, it's pared down a little bit. We just have the project search, um, the main map viewer that we call create a map, and then links to the other custom map viewers. There is a tool menu, the top right, um, with those links as well as a couple of the links uh, that we saw on the main home screen. And I wanna pull, point out, if you click the help button from the mobile site, it will open uh, a PDF specific for the mobile version. Okay, so we'll get started through the usual scenarios. Um, you know, Tim's, we publish a lot of data and you'll see more of that as we go along today. Um, but as a web, as a web application, it's best, the ideal workflow is really to, to zoom into your area of interest and then explore the data in that area. Um, if you try to view all of the layers that we have for the entire state or an entire district, um, that's going to be difficult over internet connections. But we have a lot of tools to help you get to the location that you're interested in um, and explore the data um, that you find in that area. And of course, our project data, uh, we're out there working on the roads. And here at ODOT, we manage the project data in an application called Ellis. So we pull updates from Ellis uh, to Tim's every night and um, have some special filters to help you navigate that really large database. You can see that it's remembered the last searches that I did when I came to this page. And there's some reset buttons. So that's handy that your browser will, will remember those settings um, if you are usually searching the same district or, or county or year filters, um, those will reload next time you visit. But to filter the data, you just use the drop downs. And um, once you pick a district, it will filter the county list to the, to the counties that are in that district. It will populate the entire um, project ID list. If you know the beginning of the project ID, you can start typing that there. Or you can filter by the type of work or the, or the um, work category. I'm going to apply that date filter that we saw when we first came to the page. So click the calendar icon. And I want to limit projects um, to just this current year. So I'm going to set the from and to, to both, both to 2020. And you'll see as I'm clicking and filtering, it's updating the results count at the bottom. And if I want to view those results, I'll click this tab to expand. And um, of course, you know, we've got small, a small amount of real estate here in the mobile view, but it does give you the ability to flip through uh, those 16 records. And you can um, view them in the map. You can even open the project information page and be able to scroll through all the attributes that we store for that project. Um, and a, a button to view and map. I'm going to click the back button to get back to that search screen and reopen my results and see if there's anything else in here. Okay, so you can uh, check each record if I want to view multiple. Okay, it's selecting them all and then view and map. So just like in the main um, desktop application, it's going to query out those projects that you selected and then highlight them on the map view, zoom to that area. Hopefully. Excellent. And uh, we'll see, we have the, the tools that are available uh, minimized off to the side. So you can zoom out and see more about this area, open our tools menu and see that we can still change our base map and still have access to that um, Ohio Statewide Imagery Program with the high quality aerial photographs.
I'll keep it on the ODOT base map um, for now. We can um, turn on other layers in this area. Uh, there's links here, and there also is a shortcut on the right side of the screen. So we have all the same layers. I can see what culverts are in this region. Um, I can turn on to see what projects are currently in the construction phase. And scroll up and down through all these layers. Um, if you attended the, this morning's webinar, you you looked at the uh, secured crash data that you have to have access to in the GCAT system, but we also have a pared down version of that data um, that, that is available to, to the public easily. It just has a minimum number of the attribute fields. And um, we show the previous three years of that data. It's a very large data set. So we narrow it down to the previous three years so that it can be something reasonable to be able to draw on the map. So we can turn that on. And um, we have the identify tools. So we can get information about any of these features that we've that we've drawn on the map. Before I move on, again, show you that the legend, the dynamic legend, uh, will update as you turn layers on and off. So of all the layers that you have turned on, you can pick a layer. It's not letting me scroll down, but and then if you click on one of those features in the map, you'll show that it's selected and you switch over to your results pane. Um, and similar to the results that we saw with the project search, you can see all those attributes. So uh, let's see what else we have in here. If you're, if you're out in the field um, and you want to measure something in between, you know, two of the features that you see on the map, you can pick your measurement tool if you want to draw uh, a polygon, use area. If you want to just draw a line and get a length, you can do feet. Activate the tool by clicking the measure button. And that's, um, that's a behavior that you'll see throughout TIMS with a lot of these tools. You'll pick your option and then there'll be a button to click to, to activate that tool. And then um, you'll do something like, like click on the map to, uh, to measure and it will give you some tips. And then click the last point when you're done. So just click it again, and it'll bring up your results and feet. And with this tool, if you change your measurement unit, it'll update that automatically, and you won't have to um, redraw your shape on the map. And then the X button will clear that graphic off your screen. And we also have the log point tool that will let you report a log point. Again, you'll activate that tool um, by clicking the button and it'll indicate it wants you to click on the map. I'm gonna click over a roadway and it drew a flag so I know it recognized my click. I can switch to results and view that um, county log point. You'll see the NLF ID here and the log point 3 point or 13.492. And again, you can clear that out. So of course, um, in the mobile version, you wanna, you'll wanna be able to zoom to your location in the field. And we have this um, location button up at the top right corner. And I have my browser to mimic uh, the location of ODOT central office. But of course, um, wherever you are uh, at home right now, it will zoom to that area. And you can see I've zoomed out a little bit and um, I've turned on quite a few layers and we see all the crash points and all of the culverts. So um, that's just to reiterate, the best way to use TIMS is to really narrow down to the area that you're, um, that you're interested in and then explore what's in that area. So um, We've gone over, say you're in the field and you've gotten a little bit of information, but you know that you're you're gonna have to look up some more things um, when you get back to the office. So you've got what you want in Tim's here and you wanna just the quickest way to get back to this in the desktop version. You can use the share tool and it will populate this URL that you can just right click copy. 
And then you can text that or email that to yourself from your phone. And then from a, another browser window, if I just paste that in. It'll open Tim's, zoom into that location, and remember which layers you had turned on. So that can be really handy for going between the different formats. There you go. Um, okay, so before we move away from the mobile version altogether, let's take a look at how you can do that same workflow, but from one of the custom map viewers. Um, so I'm gonna choose map viewers and I'm going to do county managers. I believe this map viewer was um, designed for the county manager role that would be actively working in the field and wanted to um, identify culvert features. So we can see, oh, if we look at the layers, there will be um, less layers and we have culverts, but we have them symbolized differently. We have um, projects only showing um, pavement treatment projects. And we've pulled in um, an external source to view parcels. This is a this is not an ODOT um, data set, but it's published through um, OIT and it's statewide parcels, a conglomeration um, where available. So again, the best way is we want to zoom down into a smaller area on the map. And I'll try to get rid of that graphic, but now when we turn on our areas or our layers in this area, we'll see the culverts by their rating. Go to this area, see more features. And you'll see that the rating um, where available is, is part of the icon. And we can try turning on this parcel service. And even though this parcel service is not um, an ODOT feature, we can still use our identify tool if I'm able to pick that. Okay. And then select one of the parcels. And um, it will show me that information with the link to the auditor. So that's really useful. I'm going to turn that off now and turn on the future payment treatment lines. So if we're in the field, we're at our work location, um, we're looking for, for culverts that need to be inspected. Um, we know we already have crews that are in the field working on this um, pavement project. We can forward them directly um, to a culvert and the label is the uh, culvert file number for quick reference. And then of course we could save this link or do the share to copy that link. Share that however you like. And get there in the desktop version using that URL. So there you go. Okay, so um, I'll leave this tab up while we move over to the desktop version. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be able to quickly come back there and we can um, compare how things might look in the desktop versus the mobile version. But let's go to the main desktop version and um, let's follow the same steps and you'll see how things are, are a little different. So first we'll do a project search. We've got that massive project um, database that we call Ellis. And I believe projects um, in Ellis will come through to Tim's um, all the way back to 2003. And we have older, we have a layer called project history with um, older information. And we pull them into TIMS if they have um, committed funding, um, a valid work location, and this um, paragraph at the top will, will explain. You can see it automatically 
when you pull up the page, it automatically um, pulls in all the records and we're pulling in 66,000 records. This first column is the project ID. And um, you'll note that there are multiple records with the same project ID, but they have a different log point. And we map all these project locations using the log points that are provided in Ellis. So that's a good thing to understand. Um, let's see, when you have a type of, um, when you have a combination of log points with a begin and an end, we can map that along the roadway as a line. And when we um, have a begin log point, but no value for the end log point, that comes through and maps as a point. So here, let's pick all of the PID 109069. And view in map, just so you can see that in action. Hopefully. I think I'd better tread carefully in today's webinar so I don't uh, tempt the network fates. Okay, so you'll see it's come out with two um, different results layers, the lines, and I can view that record and the points, those two records. Let's go back to the project search page and uh, finish all of the features that we have here. Um, of course, the, the filters at the top work just like it did in the mobile site. Um, and I've narrowed down union and, and that it remembered that search. I'm gonna add my 2020. Oh, without clicking reset. It automatically is filtering those records out. And if I change to just view five records on this page, um, we'll be able to see without scrolling down that it's um, brought it down to 16 records for projects in Union County um, in the calendar year of 2020. So I can explore a little more um, just from this results table by sorting any of the data um, by project work category. Again, expand the number of records I see on the same page. I can use the search box uh, to search for any terms. I always use it to narrow down by route. Um, when we're looking at this, the route field, um, it's always five characters. So we pad it with zeros. So route 31 um, is 00031. And knowing that, we can use the generic search tool. Uh, yeah, 33. There's no Route 42 in Union County. So we can narrow it down and just get the, um, the, the, the projects that are happening on Route 33. Select all three of those. We could click the View and Map button. We could export this information out to um, in four formats. And if you wanted to do that, you would pick your format. It would um, compile that, pull that data together, and then this download button would enable. And we can open that project information page. We saw the mobile version earlier. Um, and here in the desktop version, you just click the view details button to the far left of any of the records. And it'll bring up um, the project information page. This is all the attributes that we store in the project tables. Um, just spread out so it's a little easier to navigate because there are there is a lot going on. And of course we have the links. Um, there will always be an enabled hyperlink for the project plans, proposal, and agenda. That doesn't necessarily indicate that we have documents loaded. Let's see if this one does. It's going to open um, digital paper the, um, that's managed by the Office of Contracts, I believe. And usually it will come straight through. But I think we can just type in that PID. Uh, 110385. 
Oh, look at that. Okay, so here we have access to all of the, the diagrams and the um, project plan information. And um, maybe you just click this button if you want to view the plan. And depending on your district um, or wh however this is loaded, it'll either open a separate PDF or you'll view it directly in the browser. So that's a really easy way to reference that information. Oh, back here. Oh, sorry. Um, if you need even more information, there's a link to um, the web version of Ellis here at the top. Ellis Proj. And earlier it took this page a little while to, there it goes, to respond, but it did automatically populate. So that's another resource if you know much about the Ellis system. And of course that view and map button again. Um, from here, let's click view and map. I think we've covered everything that you can do on that project search page. And that page is intended to help you narrow down the project information that you're looking for by geographic area or the type of work. You could narrow down this information um, by starting directly in the Create a Map page. We sent our query and got this project layers, um, results layer by starting with the project search page, but you could also start from the Create a Map page and do some queries on the project data. Katie, we have a question for you. Okay and it's um, revolving around the, the maps. Um, someone wanted to know that now that the map wasn't grayed out and is available, was it just a matter of waiting? Um, the map wasn't grayed out. Um, yeah, this it, question came in about three minutes ago. Sorry. Oh, okay. It's, is this person having trouble getting the site to load on on their PC or is it in response to something I had grayed out? I'll have to let them put another comment in the question box. Okay. And then I can let you know. Okay. So yeah, oh, definitely so give us more details to what can... they were viewing on the screen. So it must've been what you were showing. Um, so if somewhere along the way, if I was doing a search and there wasn't, oh, you know what, if I'm in the results table here, the way the view and map button is not, is not activated, um, perhaps that's what they mean by grayed out. In order to activate it there, I would just need to select um, a record in the results table. He, he, pretty, to slide these more clarification. he said the the view and map button was grayed out for a moment. Oh okay. It may have just been thinking. It should it should if you have um record selected then um, you should be able to click it. So hopefully that's working okay for you now. Um he said thank you. Okay. So in the create a map page, our main map viewer, there are a lot of ways to, to get to um, your area of interest. And we'll go through some of those tools. First, let's just do a quick overview. Um, we're gonna be navigating through this toolbar. So this pane on the left side of the screen, as we switch from our different tools, um, this left pane will, will update. It defaults to show you the layers, which are uh, grouped into these Buckets and you can expand. Of course, as you turn layers on, your legend will update. Um, as we switch through all these options in the in the toolbar, um, you'll see the screen update. And the first tools we're going to go through are these find locations, or I like to think of them as the zoom to tools. 
So you can enter in an address and um, just by default, as an example, that's going to be populated with the address of central office. If you have a coordinate, then you're able to type that in. But we also have the find log point. Um, if you know the county, um, and then it'll filter down to all of the routes in that county. So let's say state route seven, and then it'll give you a tip on the valid uh, county log points in that county. So if I enter 16, it would zoom to that log point. And it's also going to report the latitude and longitude for that point. Uh, just like we saw in the mobile version, we can click on the map and report a log point. Um, let me just get to another area so you'll see that's different. So I'm going to activate my tool. I, I clicked on the button to activate the tool. And now I'm just going to click over a roadway. It'll draw the flag. I might be zoomed out too far to find it. While your computer is doing the zoom thing, um, I want to read off another question or request that came into the question box. It says, please explain again how the parcels are brought up. Thank you. OK, yeah. Um, the parcels are included in right now. They're included in just one of the custom map viewers. And um, that is, so I'm going to go to my title bar and click Map Viewers. It's available in the County Manager's Map Viewer. We've had a lot of interest in this, so um, as we go through our next releases, um, we were in the middle of working on a next release for Tim's when things got sidetracked a little bit with current situations. But I think having these external um, services available through the main map viewer is something that a lot of people would benefit from. So if you wanted to view them um, here in Thames, you can go to the county manager's map viewer. And I've turned it on. It's going to have a draw um, limit. So you'll have to zoom in quite far before it'll actually draw. Sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy with my zooming. There you go. And then you could inspect it just like any other feature um, with the identify tool. So we saw that in the mobile version and in the desktop version, it's this I button. Um, so I click this, it's activated. Just gonna click a feature on the map. And every feature that intersects that little selection box, um, it's going to bring up and I can toggle through them with these arrows. And the identify tool works the same way um, for any of the any of the layers that you have turned on. Um, let's get back to create a map. I probably should have stayed where I was. I could have stayed where I was because you'll also see that all of the tools are available in each of those map viewers as well. The only difference between the create a map and the map viewers is going to be the layers that are available and uh, the symbols for those layers. Um, okay, so we looked at the find log point tool and the um, the last and the easiest way to zoom into an area would be to just pick your county or district or an urban area. And just like all the drop down lists in Tim's, you can start typing to filter out the list. So I've gotten down to um, closer to a, an area of interest and I can turn on some of those layers that we saw before, like um, what projects are currently under construction. And let's zoom into this area here. And from here, I could turn on other assets, like our culverts, use my identify tool, to get information on any of these culverts individually. 
Um, bridge data is something that's used a lot. We pulled this nightly from our um, bridge system, SMS, I believe. And so those will label with the bridge uh, file number. Once you zoom in. So um, I'm not gonna go through all these layers because again, there's, there's so much information. Uh, we looked at the crash data, and of course we have all of our roadway information data just as an overview. Um, traffic count stations, traffic count segments to give you the, um, the average annual daily traffic. And this data set is worth pointing out because it links to our traffic system. So if I clicked on a link, for this record, I could scroll down and I'm going to have a URL that will take us directly to the MS2 system for more information from our um, traffic count section. So lots of ways to connect um, to all the different systems and all the different data portals that are that are managed by ODOT. Okay, um, again, you can change your, bat, your base map to explore the area more. And that is from the few buttons that are at the top right of your screen, all those same base map options. And I always like to point out that your base map is going to be remembered by your browser. So if I was exploring an area, zoomed in and looking at the aerial photographs, then I came back to Tim's the next day and um, my map window wouldn't load. It was just spinning with a white screen. One thing to always try first is to come to your base map drop down list and switch because it may just be trying to load those really large image data sets for the entire state when you first open. Okay, so there's some other things you can do with the data once you have it turned on. Um, and we'll go through our filter tools. If you attended this morning's GCAT webinar, you saw very similar tools for um, selecting crash records. You can draw a shape on the map and um, by graphic, let's start with that one. And then pull all the records from a layer that intersect with that shape. Okay, so if I want to, did I turn bridges off? Probably, okay. So let's do our traffic count segments and we can draw a polygon. So we've picked our options. We want to activate the tool with the draw button and then it's gonna give you shortcuts on what it expects. I'm gonna double click to complete. And I can click the search button to populate my results window at the bottom with the records that intersected that shape that I drew. And then um, just like the project search results table, I could sort anything in here. I could zoom to an individual record or zoom to all of them. And I could export the, the 15 entries or however many you have in your results table in those uh, four formats, so KML, Shapefile, or Geodatabase. It again has the uh, search button. If you know what you're looking for and you're not sure which field, you could just start typing. If you're gonna spend a long time in this view, you can customize which columns that you're seeing. Okay, um, you can also, do some more generic spatial filters by just picking a geographic area. So if I want to get all of the traffic count segments um, in, let's try to get a smaller county. Let's stick with Union today. Just gonna zoom to the area and it's thinking and then click the search button. You'll notice I had um, minimized my results table. So to bring that back, I just click this arrow once it's done thinking. 
I may have overshot it, but just like we saw in the previous search, here we go, it brought up 1900 records. And now I could explore this table, um, change the number of records I view on one screen. I can resize this, uh, zoom to individual records, remove items from the results table, and of course export. So some basic ways to, to explore your data. Um, if you have data that's not available in TIMS that you really want to see in reference to what we're viewing, I'm going to clear this. You can pull that in uh, and view that in TIMS for your current browser setting. So we'll do one example. Um, if you have a shapefile or a KMZ, if you have LRS events would be if you have a table of NLF ID and log points or a spreadsheet with coordinates. Um, let's do geocode addresses. And I should have a file handy. There you go. All right. The network's, uh, it's, it's hanging on for me. I might be pushing it, but okay. So I pick my file. I'm going to click upload, and then it will attempt to fill in these fields. You'll see it didn't find a city field because it's called city name, but I'll just pick it and the zip code, and then click the geocode button. So um, this was a list of um, the district headquarters. You can see it's mapped all of them. It's also populated my results table with all the information that was in that spreadsheet. So that can be really helpful. But now once I navigate away from, um, from this site, I close Chrome and reopen it later, that data won't be there. It's just temporary for your current browser session. Uh, similarly, if you have a spreadsheet of lat longs, you can put that in and spit out the um, the locations, the addresses. I might be saying that backwards. Don't quote me. Okay. Uh, and then there are a few other tools in the desktop version that might be useful when you're in a certain area. So let's... Zoom into a smaller area before I open my tools menu. Um, we saw that measure tool in mobile, so um, I won't do that again. Draw, you can just draw a basic shape if you needed to do a print screen or make a note. You can set a bookmark. Um, so you can have a list of bookmarks here if there are locations that you visit regularly, um, and then you'd be able to just come to bookmarks and, and click there and those will remain until you cleared your browser history and cookies. And then we have links to the ODOT Path Web. This is an amazing system. Um, I've clicked that and it looks like nothing has happened, but if I move my cursor over, it has activated the tool and you can tell because it has the crosshairs icon. Excuse me. And now I'm just gonna click over a roadway it's going to snapshot that location and send it to the PathWeb website. Hopefully, yep, open, zoomed into that area. And if you haven't seen this site before, looks like it is still loading, but um, there would be some play buttons and you could just um, navigate down the road and see what's on the side of the road, get a view of the pavement below the collection van. And then there would be a, like a Google Maps view here. Another good resource. And there was one more uh, map channel. This just gives a different view. You can click anywhere for map channel. It doesn't have to be directly on a road. We'll click on a road. They've added this cover page. So just click this view map button. 
and you'll see it's just going to give the satellite view and the map view and if i had been on a roadway it would have automatically enabled street view well i am way out in union county so there might not be a street view but as you navigate one window it will automatically update the other so that's also a really good resource for um, exploring an area maybe prevent yourself um, prevent a field check or something like that okay so of all of these layers that we have available to view in tim's map um, you're going to have a lot of information, right? We know we can use the identify features tool to get a list of all the attributes and their values for a record that we click on. We know that we can use the filter data tool to query out a subset and put that into the results table. Um, but what if we don't know what, what a field or attribute is representing, right? Well, then we have a resource we can always check and that's our data glossary. So you can come to your data glossary um, and it's going to automatically populate a record for every field and every data set that we have here in TIMS. So you'll want to filter that down just like all the other content within TIMS. And there's a drop down list of all of the um, fields. So I think there was a question this morning's webinar. Can we get information about the, the field definitions for the crash data? This won't have all of the fields. This is just the fields included in the safety public um, layers on the create a map viewer. And there still are some limitations and some of these uh, required really long definitions, but there's a character limit here in our glossary at this time. But it's a good starting point um, to get some information. So we can look at crash data. Again, if it has a lot of fields, you can expand the number of records you're seeing. You can export okay. this out as a spreadsheet. Yeah. Sorry. There's a question that came in. It says, I'm interested in learning how to get demographic data from the map viewer. I can get the map, but not sure how to get the sidebar data to show up when creating the map. The sidebar data. Okay. So let's go to our create a map. I don't know how much demographic data as far as population or census data that we have published here, but if you are wanting to populate um, the information for the layers that you have turned on, I'll show you again how to use that identify button. Maybe. hopefully. And before we go, I also wanted to touch base on the standard PDFs page. These are just some pre-configured um, PDF templates for printing out some maps. You can always print what you're viewing from the create a map page. Um, that's just going to be a pretty generic, no, no legend will be included. Okay, so here we made it back. And I'm just going to turn on facilities. I know that will draw statewide. And then if I want to populate this pane with the information, hopefully that's what the user was requesting. I can just click on the map. And I want to get more room for that. So I'm going to minimize my results table. And now for this ODOT facilities table, um, it's going to give me all of the attributes. So if we are looking at this in the results table, each um each line would correspond to a column in the table right so each column would be an attribute and then the value so this feature is in franklin county um, it includes the address and that's about all the information you know all the information you're going to get here but it's always worth looking at the table or um, the identify features to see if there are any urls included like we saw with I use my zoom tool again to get down to a smaller area and then turned on the traffic data 
under roadway information. Activate my identify features tool. And then click on one of the records in the map. It'll show which record was populated and I can scroll down and see that there's a URL there. So a lot of our feature classes do have um, hyperlinks included in the tables. We have a lot of uh, assets that are inspected in the field that we have links to the inspection records. So let's try um, culverts does it where they might attach even a, a photograph straight under drain no it was outfalls usually gives me good all right so i can see some features i'm going to bring it up with my identify tool and scroll down and i picked the wrong one Let's try Okay, so this one has a, a link directly to PathWeb. No. Here we go. So this is how it will look um, with a lot of the assets that we um, inventory and inspect through our collector asset program. Let's see if there are any attachments included. So when the inspector was in the field, they took some photographs and attached them directly. And you can view those view Tim, through TIMS. And a lot of these assets, again, are updated daily. So if there's um, a new attachment added today, tomorrow you should be able to access that in TIMS. very good high quality photo that I don't even know if we want to watch that load all the way. Um, so hopefully that answered that question. And before we run out of time, um, I'll just quickly go to the standard PDF map so that you just know that this is another research resource. You can pick your, um, your template and basically it's, um, you're picking the subject that you want for your map. So say if you want to view milepost data for a specific county, then you can pick your county, choose your base map, um, your format, and then there's going to be some orientation and size options. So we'll choose a smaller one. Like all the other behaviors in TIMS, you will click a button to generate uh, after you've selected your settings. And then when your product is ready, um, a download button will will appear. And after this, the only other section I wanted to make sure I touched on is the data download page. Um, and that's where you can get the full data sets. Um, you can get all of the culvert data downloaded as either a CSV or shapefile or KMZ. You can get it for the entire state. So it's all prepackaged on that page to make it faster to download. So we'll look at that in a second, but here's our example of a milestone map for the county that we selected. It's gonna have a basic legend, um, predetermined symbols and labels. So if there's a map that you generate on a regular basis for reporting or field crews, and you don't see something useful in that, um, current list, you're welcome to reach out to us and, and request something. If we think it's something that would be useful to a lot of people, we're more than happy to look into developing that. Okay, and finally, our data download page. So it's those same data buckets that we saw in the create a map. And you can expand them, select as many as you like through any of the different buckets and then export and choose your format. I'm not gonna click it because I wanna freeze up, um, but you will, you will get a zip file and then inside of that zip file, there will be zip folders for each of the individual data sets. 
So if you if you do a lot of analysis and you want the full data set, um, that's going to be your your go to there. Okay. Any questions? We have five minutes. There's no new questions since the last one. So if anyone okay. has them, they can definitely put them in the the question box. I am so well, glad. Let's roll to out. Let's huh? pick one more. Um, let's pick one more map viewer to, uh, okay. to roll out our last few minutes. Sounds good. I think another another popular map viewer is environmental. It also has a lot of features specific to environmental workflows and the environmental specialists um, that aren't included in the create a map page. So if you deal with that line of work, it's worth exploring. Maybe. And as a general rule, um, any, any layer that we have published to the Create a Map Viewer is going to be included in the data download page and the glossary page. Um, a lot of the data sets that are only included in specific map viewers because they have a, a smaller target audience um, probably won't be included in the data download and the data glossary. So uh, all the functionality is the same, the same toolbar with the same options. The difference will be uh, the layers that we can choose from. And some might be duplicated, might be pulling the exact same service, um, like projects. So it's going to be a duplicate of what's in Create a Map. But we have, oh, here we have some demographic indicators. So the user that had um, mentioned that might want to remember we have some of that information available from the environmental viewer. Um, flood hazard information. I don't know a lot about this data, so I don't know. Let's turn on levees. Um, again, we're not zoomed in to a smaller area, so at this at the scale. Uh, might not be very useful, but I will zoom into our default address or if you had bookmarks, again, you could do that through tools, bookmarks. And there we go, we do, we see a levy. Of course, our identify tool will work with that. or it'll just spin. There we go. So you can see what information we have about that feature. Um, oh, there's one more in our last two minutes. There's one more map viewer. It's a relatively new one. Um, I think it's going to catch on and be really useful to a lot of people. It is the act of transportation. We worked with uh, statewide planning and research, as well as the um, the office that Caroline is in, safety. And um, there's a big initiative to map the uh, the roadways that have bike path attributes. So not necessarily the standalone bike paths that um, vehicles cannot drive on, but when you're in the the municipal areas and you'll see the bike path icons on the roads. Um, a big effort to try to get those mapped out. So we've got information in this map viewer, um, custom ways of viewing that bike route system and some information that might be useful for the use of those bike routes. Um, recently, there was a big study done to, to apply some scores to um, areas in Ohio that have a need for active transportation or a high demand for active transportation. That's kind of cool. And some of your basic boundaries to use as reference. Looks like... We're about out of time though, so I do want to make sure I end back at my contact screen so everyone knows um, how to get a hold of us. If you have any questions or requests, 
If you email that address, tims at dot.ohio.gov, it will um, go to my inbox as well as several others. So uh, we'll be sure to get back to you right away. Katie, thank you so much for this fantastic webinar. We appreciate it. We are really happy that the system, the network connection held out too. So <laughs> as always, you've given us a lot to think about and new ways to look at using the TIM system. So everyone take care, have a great rest of your afternoon and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.